Okay, so in March of 1861, Abraham Lincoln is inaugurated as the 16th president of the United States. And as we already discussed, right, Lincoln's election in November of 1860 is really what precipitates um, South Carolina and then the six or so other states to wind up seceding from the United States, from the country, right? And because they knew that he was going to be uh, anti-slavery, right? So he, with his election, we know that the South winds up, parts of the South wind up seceding from the United States. He's also the first Republican president, right? He is the person who helps um, solidify the Republican Party as this sort of anti-slavery party. Um, and I give you today, or we're going to look at today, Lincoln's uh, inaugural address, right? And you can see, right, he, he starts out looking at, in a way that a lot of presidents do, right, my fellow citizens, right? Again, talking as a person who's concerned about the country as a citizen of the United States. And then he, he talks about the, the role that he is, he is coming into the office with and sort of pledges what his goals are for the country, right? Resolved that the maintenance of, uh, that the maintenance inviolate of the rights of the states, especially the rights of each state to order and control its own domestic institutions, right? We are going to honor states' rights, which was the thing that a lot of southern states had feared he was going to, to um, not respect, right? So again, he's using all of the language uh, about trying to to bring the South back together. And if you remember, I mean, this is where he sort of says he's saying like, if the South, if the, if a fight begins, it's the South who has started it, not me and not us. And he's sort of challenging, in many ways, the South to take the first to take the first swing, as it were. Um, and and again, I give you quite a bit of it, but I, I want you to to at least see what the flavor of that is. Uh, the next one here is a is a letter from William Lloyd Garrison about uh, from 1863 uh, after the Battle of Gettysburg, really looking at sort of uh, the changing role of African Americans in the Civil War. And it's a great document sort of looking at um, William Lloyd Garrison, again, the famous uh, abolitionist from um, uh, from the pre-war era. Um, you know, again, looking at that. The other document I want to point out here is, is though the final document that I want to look at here is the Emancipation Proclamation, right? One of the things that we know about Abraham Lincoln uh, is the, as the great liberator, right? The man who freed all the slaves. It's important to notice that it's not until after the war with the passage of the 13th Amendment that slavery is abolished. Uh, so Lincoln uses a sort of threads a really interesting legal, um, a legal needle, right? Um, and he proclaims the, the Emancipation Proclamation. So it, it comes into effect in January of 1863, and the point of this, right, is it's a military action. So if you look down here, the places where slavery becomes illegal are in parts of this, the country that are rebelling against the United States, right? So they are the Confederacy, places he does not have control over. So places that he does have control over, Kentucky, Delaware, Maryland, they can all keep their slaves. Why? Basically what they're saying is as we conquer new places in the South, we are going to take those slaves and free those slaves. He can do this as a military action, right? Because when he takes it over, it becomes a piece of military property. Who is the head of the military? The president, right? So it's a very interesting way of, of going about this. Um, again, so on the day that it's passed, the Emancipation Proclamation doesn't free any slaves, um, and it's only free slaves as the war continues. All right, so good luck. Take care.